Can you hear me? Yes. Okay, good. Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, welcome to this uh, EAB, uh, EMTP webinar that will present our new protective relays library. Um, I'm very happy to present this webinar because I am actually being involved personally on the development of the relay. So um, I'm happy and actually proud to present it today. Uh, it's the result of like a uh, lot of months of work. So I really hope you will enjoy, but I'm sure you will. Uh, and I hope as well, eventually, you will become user. That would be fantastic. Um, okay, so before we start, um, just let's take a step back and see why would you need to study uh, protection with EMTP. Um, and so then that's the content of the uh, of the training of the sorry of the webinar. I do too many trainings. Um, okay, so you can see here. So first, we will see uh, the um, the general architecture of the relays, uh, the way they are built in EMTP, and then we'll go through different examples. So the first one on overcurrent. So it's a pretty basic and simple, but uh, it, it will tell uh, tell us a lot about uh, how it works. Uh, then we'll go to the distance protection, uh, the the differential protection for the transformer. Uh, the power swing out of step detection, uh, the loss of field, and finally the frequency relay. So we'll go through all these examples. Uh, we, I mean, we don't have a lot of time, so for some of them we will have to go uh, through a bit, uh, a bit fast. But um, I'll be happy then to uh, to explain more in detail. If some of you have some question, uh, you can contact us after the webinar, and uh, I can give you some more information. So why would you study protection uh, with EMTP? Well, first, because um, EMTP provides a very unique environment where you can model both power and control. And you can actually model the power with a lot of precision. Okay, I see, uh, I see here a lot of uh, uh, EMTP user, and uh, you know it's in time domain. Uh, so you, have, you, you reproduce the waveform the exact same way they are uh, on the network. We don't work with phaser, we work with the actual waveform in the time domain, so the sinusoidal. Um, so you can reproduce like that the saturation uh, of the CT, the CVT, the saturation of the transformers. Uh, and we can, in the end, in this environment, reproduce all steps of, uh, of the protection. So the sampling, uh, well, first the burden resistance of the relay, the anti-aliasing filter, the sampling, then the digitalization, um, the DFT to, to go from the time domain to the phaser domain, and then all the algorithms of, uh, of generic or manufacturer's relay. So that's what we tried to do in this first version of the library and I will pre that I will present today. Um, and uh, yeah, it gives a lot of flexibility in, pro in, uh, in modeling the, uh, the protection. Uh, also, it allows you to do studies that are kind of hard to do with traditional protection software. Um, one very important example, uh, which become more and more important, is when you have uh, inverter-based equipment like, you know, fax, renewable energy, wind park, uh, uh, solar park, or HVDC, because EMTP has very uh, good models for those. Uh, and so you can study the protection very precisely. And I will present you some of the work we've done uh, that shows uh, misoperation of relays with renewable or just different behavior that are important to consider uh, when you study protection. Um, one other thing in the MTP, you have very accurate model of machines, uh, which are in time domain. Uh, we model the AVR, the governor, the, the stabilizer, and that can have an influence of the short circuit current over the time, uh, or if any time you have a fault, those uh, governor and machines react. So we, uh, we consider that in the MTP. And finally, it's also possible with the model of line we have, uh, to reproduce the, tra the to represent sorry the traveling waves, 
Uh, and now more and more manufacturers are considering the traveling ways uh, in their protection. So it will be eventually a good tool to, uh, to study that. So, um, okay, so without uh, further explanation, uh, let's go in the MTP and uh, have a look at this uh, library. So when you will, uh, when you will get this library uh, and you install it, in the end, you will have uh, a new lib in uh, ENTP, which is then protection like that. And in this lib, you will have all the relays, uh, the CTs, and some functions that could be useful. Okay, so um, let's go through the beginning. So you have the CTs, okay, three phase, one phase. Uh, you have some CVTs or some uh, VTs. Okay, and so then you have the relays. The way we build it, uh, is that we gather to, we put together some uh, function that works together. So instead of having one relay where you have everything in there, you will choose a relay according to the function you want to study. The reason of that is uh, EMTP is a very precise software, but because we go in a very advanced level of precision, it can get very heavy to consider every protection in a relay. So right now, the, the philosophy behind that is when you want to study a particular protection, you drag and drop the relay with the protection you want to. And if, for example, you're interested in distance, which is the ANSI number 21, and overcurrent in the same time, you can just drag and drop the two relays. Okay, so let's, do, let's drag and drop one with the, the distance relay. Okay, so then the way it works uh, to assemble all that in the MTP, you connect the CT to the input I, you connect the VT to the input V, okay, and finally you have the output here which is the tripping. And you can connect that to this device, the control breaker, and integrate all that in your network. Okay, so it's very straightforward, um, to, very easy to use. Uh, you have here two other inputs which are uh, the residual current and voltage. So that's where you can uh, connect uh, the CT for one phase from the neutral and same thing, the voltage transformer, one phase from the neutral. So those are extra inputs. Um, then you are not forced all the time to use all the inputs. For example, if you are studying, uh, if you are modeling an overcurrent relay, of course you don't have to connect uh, the VT. You connect only uh, the current. So you will connect in the end the, the input you need. Okay, so let's go quickly through uh, those models of uh, CTs and VTs. So very classic, so you input, it's kind of the same model as the regular transformers in the MCP. Uh, you input the, uh, natural frequen the nominal frequency, uh, the ratio, the current at the primary and at the secondary, then the resistance of the transformer, of the current transformer, the, uh, the, admit, the admittance as well, primary, secondary. Um, then you have here, uh, you have here a, a window that can help you to build a typical saturation curve. Okay, so the way it works, you input what standard you're working with, uh, the class, and uh, the secondary voltage of the transformer. Then if you click on load a uh, typical saturation curve, you will see that it will populate a curve from our database. So here we are starting the new library. So we started, put, we started putting a lot of curves in the database, but it's not perfect yet. So sometime it's possible that there is no match. And in that case, you will receive a message saying that there is no match in the database and you will have to enter the curve manually. Okay, and so finally you have um, the, the input for the burden, so the resistance of the relay, of the cables between the CTs and the relay, and all the equipment in the end connected to the relay. So you can input the value yourself in home or in uh, volt amps, or you can also use standards from the uh, standard from the uh, the well, standard, sorry, and then uh, load them, and they will populate automatically uh, the burden data. 
Okay, so very, uh, very easy to use. Like always in the MTP, you have access to what's inside. Okay, so it's the, you can see here the voltage transformer, so three non ideal units and the burden here. Then the output of the CT is a bundle with the measurement of the three current. So here we are, it's a control pin. Okay, so you can control, you can connect control device like the relay. Okay, so it's the same then for, uh, for the VTs. So you, same thing, the ratio, you can also change the connection. Uh, you have the burden data and the same thing, the magnetization curve as well. No, there is no database yet for the VTs. Okay, and finally the CVTs, okay, again, very, uh, very similar. You have the ratio of the transformer here and also the uh, value of the capacitance that divide the voltage and also uh, the RLC uh, tuning and factor uh, at the secondary. Okay, so, um, yeah, so that's pretty much it for the CTs and VT. So that's what will uh, take the information from the grid to send them to the uh, relay. So now let's have a look at the different relay. So for that, let me open the first example, uh, which will be on uh, overcurrent relays. Okay, so very simple example. Uh, one machine with a line and uh, two outfeeders. And, you know, it's a coordin uh, uh, coordination, protection coordination. Okay, so uh, we have here only the CT connected to the relays, uh, the breaker here, and finally the relay itself here. So let's have a look at the input you have to uh, give to the relay. So when you open the mask, the first page is about uh, all the CTs and VTs connections. So here you input the type of connection, the ratio, so for the phase CT, the ground CT, the ground VT, and the phase VT. And the rated uh, value, either at the secondary of the CT, in which case you select a RMS uh, sec, like secondary, or you can input the uh, base at the primary of the CT, in which case uh, the relay will find the, will calculate the base, base at the secondary using the ratio. Okay, same thing for the voltage. You will put here the voltage either at the primary or at the secondary. So here it's RMS line to line at the primary or RMS line to ground at the secondary. Okay, so then here you have the input for the sampling of the relay. Uh, so you can, uh, if you are not interested by simulating the sampling, you can just put a high value and it will basically take the same sample as the time step. But if you study all relays, it can be interesting to, you know, to, to represent the sampling that can have extra delays. And also it's possible to uh, simulate the, quantitize, the quantizer. Okay, so for each input, you select the quantizer, so the resolution of uh, the signal. Again, if you have, a, if you're working on a recent relay, uh, those are very high resolution. They're actually sometimes higher than the resolution of the computer. So in that case, it's not very relevant to, to study that. But if you study all relays, maybe it can change the precision a little bit. Okay, finally, since here we do uh, some sampling, uh, we also have to do the, uh, uh, to tune the anti-aliasing filter. So here you can input the, the transfer function for the filter, or you can use the default value, in which case we will, uh, we will tune for you the filter based on uh, this, sampling, uh, this sampling rate. So how do we do that? We use a double RC filter uh, that we tune at a um, uh, low pass filter that cuts half of those frequencies. Okay, so this first tab is common for most of the relay, like overcurrent, distance, uh, over voltage, frequency, they will all have this same tab. So then considering what relay you get, the other tab will change. So here it's an overcurrent relay. So you can, you can so first you have to, uh, when you drag and drop the relay, 
the function is disabled, so you first enable the function. Okay, and then, again, if I start from the beginning, you will have like that all the different uh, functions you can enable. So the phase level of over, over current, in, the, in which case uh, we apply the curve on the phase value, so A, B, C, and you can enable two levels with like two different curves. So then uh, some manufacturers give you this option, so we put it here, you can decide if you want to uh, monitor the phaser, in which case we use a DFT algorithm uh, to find the, the current, or with the RMS value. It's just like the transient change, uh, but the, the steady state value is the same, uh, if we don't consider the square root of two, uh, but it's just like different techniques to calculate the value than in PU. So it's, uh, it's your choice here. Most of the time we use RMS because that's the one that mimics the better the thermal effect. Okay, so then you put the pickup current. So if we look at the small curve here, I can zoom a little bit. Uh, it will be this value here. Then you select the type of curve. So for the type of curve, if no selection of manufacturers are done, you will have the IEEE, the IEC, um, and some other curves. You can also build your own curves. So you define point by point, uh, the point by point, uh, the, the tripping curve. You can put negative value for the reset function as well. And so finally, if you select a manufacturer, so for example, let's say, we select uh, GE, then you will have access to, to some of special uh, general electric curves, so the, I, the IAC. Okay, and so then, so most of, the, of those curves, they ha there is a tripping, there, there is, yeah, sorry, a tripping curve, but also uh, a reset curve. So the reset curve, what it is, it's if, for example, you have an overcurrent, but that doesn't cause a trip, and the value of the current goes below uh, the pickup value then, do we reset the timer or do we want to, uh, do we reset it instantaneously or do we want to reset it slowly, again, to mimic the thermodynamic effect? So that's the, the, the goal of the reset. So if you select time, then you will reset uh, the timer using, again, some curves that are defined by the standard or the manufacturer. Or if you'd like, you can make it instantaneous in which case it will, uh, as soon as you, the current goes below the pickup current, it will be instantaneously reset. Okay, then you have the time deal as well, uh, which is in the end the, the, what is called tap on this figure to change like that proportionally the curve. Okay, so uh, nothing, uh, nothing crazy here, the same in every software, so um, you can enable different uh, level. So that was for the phase current. Here you can enable that for the neutral current. So what is it, the neutral? It's starting from the phase current, we calculate the negative sequence current, and we apply uh, the same algorithm, so the overcurrent algorithm. For the instantaneous function, oh, I forgot to talk about that, yeah, you can also enable an instantaneous function, the ANC450. In that case, you put the instantaneous value. If you want it uh, to trip instantaneously, you put zero delay, or you can add a small delay if needed. And same thing for the reset. In the case of the zero sequence, uh, the, the, the Instantaneous function is based on an operation, operation current, which is the negative sequence current minus a, re, a positive restraint. The, the goal of that is if uh, you, you are overloaded, maybe just because of, uh, of that, you can have a negative sequence because it's slightly unbalanced. But you don't want to trip for that case. So this coefficient k uh, gives you the opportunity to consider that. If you don't want to, you just put zero and uh, you go on. Okay, so again, two levels here. Uh, then you can do the same thing with the negative sequence. So it's the ANC46. Uh, uh, for some manufacturers, they call it 51Q. Uh, it's used often for the synchronous generator. So it's the exact same thing. You, you, uh, we calculate the negative sequence current 
uh, and uh, you will apply the curve on them or uh, the instantaneous uh, value. And so finally, last function is the ground. So the ground, what it is, it's the input here from uh, IR, so the residual, uh, the residual current, which is from a CT that is placed on the neutral of an equipment. Okay, so, I mean, nothing very hard in here. So basically, anytime you enable a function, um, this function will give you a signal which is a Boolean. For example, for the phase level, you will have the signal 51 PA1, PB1, PB1, PC1. And if you have an overcurrent of phase one, this signal will become one. Okay, so it's pretty easy. And so then you will have all these signals available and you can build your tripping logic out of them. And so that's the next tab. Basically, if you put zero in everything, so first what it is here, you write the tripping logic for each phase. Okay, so the tripping logic that trips the phase A, phase B, the phase C, and the tripping logic, which is common for the three phase. So here we don't do any single pole tripping, we trip only the three phase in the same time. And then you will write here your logic expression to decide when you want to trip. If I put zero here, then <clears throat> even if one of these level pick up, picks up, there will, no, there will be no tripping. So the, the relay will never trip. It's just to investigate if you would trip or not. Then if you actually want to trip, you write your expression, okay? And uh, it will trip as soon as this expression become true. So how do we do that? Below here, you have the list of all the signals available. So if you remember, just before I told you, for the phase level, you have 51 PA1. So that's uh, the tripping of phase one for the level one. So or phase A, sorry, for the level one. So if I write here that, then it will trip as soon as I have overcurrent on phase A for the level one. Then I can put or and do the same thing for the level two. And finally, I can do that for the three phase. So to avoid to do like that, to write very long expression, you have like some, uh, some uh, Boolean that directly consider that. So for example, if I write 51, P1, it will take the three phase. So either A, B, C will trip. And if I write this guy, it's the three phase for the two levels. So like that, very easily, you can write quickly your expression. Finally, you can add here an extra delay, uh, which can be, for example, the communication delay between the relay and, uh, and the breaker or the break operation time and you can put a reset delay, uh, basically what it is uh, when you will have, when you will trip because of this expression. If this expression goes back to zero, um, the relay will be reset and so the breaker will reclose after this delay. So you can do reclosing like that. Okay, so that's similar approach for every relay. The only difference will be the signal names here that will depend on what relay you are working with. Okay, so then uh, you have the variable scopes. So it's to be able to monitor what happened inside the relay. So you have all the quantity, so the phaser of the voltage, uh, phase to ground, phase to phase at the secondary of the CT, the RMS as well. Then you have them in PU, and you have the angle of those as well. And you have a second tab scope, which is uh, to see the, the, fun the output of the function. So here you scope, so those are Boolean, you scope if a function picked up or not during a, during a simulation. Finally, comment to every relay again, uh, you have the help. So the help documentation will explain you, uh, for example, here for the signal acquisition, how it works. So see, you see that you see the current and the voltage getting in, the anti-aliasing filter, the sample and hold, the Fourier discrete, et cetera then it will explain you a lot of things on how to modify the relay, uh, how, what the input to uh, put. And finally for the, um, sorry, what is that? 
no, I have a little uh, a little error here. I don't know what it is. Oh, okay, it was just because of my computer. I don't know what it is. Anyway, so here you can see the the help from the overcurrent. Uh, the cool thing is in in there is that you can see uh, the 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 value the value of the function for each curve you select. So all the parameters of those functions uh, for the manufacturers, etc. Okay, so that's uh, that's pretty much how it works. So then let's uh, let's see how we can use this uh, this library. So I guess most of you that works with overcurrent relay and protection coordination are used to do it in steady state. So that's something we can do as well in EMTP. So for example, here uh, we have some load and a machine. So first we can start by running the load flow of that. Okay, so we run the load flow here. Okay, so it was done already, but we find the voltage everywhere, etc. And then what we can do is, like you are used to, we can do the study only in steady state. So we don't do the time domain simulation, we only do the steady state. Okay, so here there is no fault. So if I run the steady state, I accept to have no tripping. Okay, so from this library protection, you have um, an option device name. Um, is it? Um, oh, I forgot to add it, I guess, in this version. Okay, it will be there. Uh, it will be there in the version that, uh, that we commercialize, but it's basically this guy, display tripping time 51. And this, one, this guy will display here the current through the relay, and if, um, if a fault, we'll tell you if what function trips and uh, which one doesn't trip. So here I have no fault, so you see all of them, there is no trip. And now if I, have, if I add a fault, okay, here for example, and I put a fault uh, face to ground, okay, that I apply in steady state, and I run the same simulation. Okay, now you can see that uh, you have uh, a negative sequence current because it's a fall to the ground. You have a, a zero sequence current, a negative sequence current, and basically here it tells you that N1, so neutral one will trip. So it's pretty interesting because, okay, here we don't do a time domain simulation, but uh, we can see when we are going to trip and if the coordination between relays is done properly. For example, this one trip in 0.45, this one trips in two seconds. So that's, pretty, uh, that's a pretty cool feature. Again, all that you are used to do it with other software, but you know it's good to, uh, to be able to do it as well in EMTP. So one other thing here is, for example, in this relay, uh, we want to simulate some reclosing. So we have two levels of, uh, of, a of a neutral, the level one and level two, and they both have different speed. They have different curve and different speed. I would like to know when this protection is supposed to trip. However, here I display only the one that trips. So for that, we have another tool, which this one I'm sure 100% is on the protection library, is the protection coordination. So in this protection coordination, you can uh, look when a protection is supposed to trip. Okay, so for example, here the, here the, the fault current is 3.2 PU for the negative sequence. Okay, so if I go there, and by the way, the, this relay, the name of this relay is relay three. So let me start from zero. So I drag and drop this guy. I can select here the relay three and I add it to the, uh, the tab here. And I can question the curve. So as I said, the fault is, if you don't remember, it's um, 3.2. Okay, so I can enter here 3.2, and it's telling me, so N1 trips at 0.46, we've seen that, but it's telling me N2 will trip in 1.7. Okay, so it's a very easy way to question like that uh, the curves and uh, investigate when another protection is supposed to trip. Another thing you can do is display the curve all together. For example, if I put uh, the relay, uh, this relay here, which is probably the relay one as well. Okay, let me check that. 
yes, the relay one. So I, I add the relay one to the tab, and then I can ch check the option create coordination plot, and you select for what uh, level you want. So let's do it for the phase, for example. So I select A1 for the phase. A mean phase, okay? It's A, we choose A, but it could be B and C. They, have, they use the same curves. So A1, so the level one. Then you click on OK. Automatically, scope view is opening. So you have to wait. As soon as scope view is open, you click on OK here. Okay, and now you can display the curves. So if you go, so for the one of you that are not used to scope view, um, so it's a tool we use to display the results. So usually it opens in two different windows, one where you select the signal, the other one where you display them. So here the signals are the curves, so you can see relay one, relay two, so I select both. Okay, so um, oh, relay one, I guess the, it, the function wasn't enabled, so that's why it's zero. Uh, okay, let's do it again for the neutral. Sorry about that. Actually, I can see that the, the phase is not, uh, was not uh, enabled in this relay. Let's do it again for the neutral. Better. Okay, so you can then display them together. Okay, so here apparently they use the same curve, so they are like completely the same. Uh, it's not very good for the, the coordination point of view. Uh, and then you can also uh, change, you can put in logarithmic if you want, okay, to make the uh, the insulation coordination, to do the, sorry, the protection coordination. Let's make them different because it's not very nice like that. So if I change, for example, here the time deal, I will put three. Okay, and I start the process over again. Okay, so now it's better and we can see like that the coordination. Okay, so that's a, a cool feature as well to uh, study coordination and then you can use all the, uh, the, the built function of scope view to see the difference between two points uh, in terms of time and see like that the coordination for every, uh, every current. Okay, so, uh, so that's pretty much it for the, the steady state function of the overcurrent. But then, you know, EMTP, the advantage of EMTP is that we are in a, a time domain software. And actually, we, can, we will see that it makes a real difference when you study in time domain or in, in the frequency domain. Why is that? Well, the first thing is because the relay, when you have a fault, you have all the DFT algorithm that takes some time to identify the fault. The typical uh, speed is like one cycle. It, it takes one cycle, one cycle and a half, for the, the discrete Fourier to, to find the value of the current. So that's a small delay. Then second thing, here you see we have AVR and a governor. So when we have the fault, the voltage will drop. Okay, and so the AVR and governor will react. And so the fault current will change during the simulation. And so the tripping time will not be exactly the same because here we have a static value of the current, whereas in time domain, we will have a dynamic value of the current. So I go to the simulation option, and this time I run the time domain. Okay, so let's do it. I can close my uh, the, the formula for scope view pages, and look at the result. Okay, so let's look at the current, for example, in uh, relay uh, three. Uh, let's. Okay, it's checked already. Perfect. Okay, so I go in control. So I see here. Relay three, and I see I zero and I A, B, and C. Okay, so the fault is applied at zero. So you see, instant, it does. It's not instantaneous. It takes about one cycle, okay, to get to the real value of the current, which is about two point, about three. Okay, that's what we can see here. It was about three. But again, here we are in time domain, so it's, uh, it's more precise. 
And then you see, because of the AVR, the current change during the simulation. And that is not considered in steady state. And so now if we take the difference between the, this point and the beginning, we actually trip in 500, okay, instead of point, uh, 45. So there's a little difference. You know, you can neglect it, or maybe in some case it will be significant. It's your decision. But uh, you can see that there is a small difference. So then something uh, a bit more fancy we could do is uh, to study the, the reclosing. Okay, so let me open another example where we model those reclosing, and I will show you how we did that in EMTP in this first version. Okay, so this time the relay are in those subcircuits. Same thing, so you have the relay with uh, the, the GTs. And so I talked pretty much about all the outputs except one of them. This output is S, S like signals. What is it in this output? So you can right click on it and, and go to breakout. You have all the signals from the relay, okay? And so instead of using the tripping logic embedded in the relay, you can build your own tripping logic outside of the relay. So that's pretty interesting because here you are completely free. You can use the control library of EMTP to build the logic you want. So in that case, okay, I took in the breakout the, uh, the output of the function, uh, the neutral level one, and I created a small reclosing strategy, which is actually from uh, the library as well. Okay, it's here, reclosing. In the mask of this, I select the number of reclose and the duration between each reclosing. So here I reclose one and I hold 4.5 seconds. Then, okay, you can go inside and see how it works. Basically, we have a detector that detects the rising age of this function, a counter, and then a off delay reset. So pretty basic. And so this time, the breaker, okay, you see that we use uh, we use the output, the tripping logic of the relay, but also this tripping logic. And we have some order. So the order, I guess you all know how to find them. You go in the library control, you take the function of hue, and here you select, in the logical, you select or. Okay, and that will give you an order, and you can put as many input as you want. And so this one in the breaker, so again, I use the breakout to control each phase, and I use in parallel the tripping logic of the relay and uh, the reclosing logic. And this time, the tripping logic of the relay is the uh, level two of the neutral. So what's gonna happen? The level one is faster, so we will trip several times using this function. But at the point, this function will stop uh, uh, opening the breaker because we'll reach the maximum number of reclosing and the function of the relay will then pick up. Okay, so uh, we can have a look at that. Actually, I think I run this simulation already. So it's the relay, what's the name? 22. Okay, and you can see the different reclosing. So the settings are a little bit different than in the example before, uh, but you can see the reclosing and the 0.5 in the middle. And you can do as many as you want like that. So it's uh, uh, pretty flexible and uh, easy to use, I find. I hope you find the same thing. Okay, so that's pretty much it for uh, the overcurrent. Okay, so now then we can go um, we can go through the uh, next um, we can go to uh, the next uh, uh, example. So let me close those one. So the next example will be on distance relay. Uh, actually, before we go to the next example, there is one more thing I wanted to show you. <clears throat> So what I wanted to show you is that one other uh, pretty original and uh, uh, I find pretty cool feature uh, on the way this, uh, this library is built is that you can access what's inside the relay. So 
So basically, how do you do? How do you do that? You push into. So you know how to do that. You have different options. You can select the relay and click go here in option and click on push into. Or if you click on Alt double click, you go in there directly. And then you have access to the logic inside the relay. So that's a pretty cool thing because to investigate a tripping, it can be very convenient. So if you go inside, uh, some people are reporting me that uh, the, the, the screen froze. Um, is it the case for everyone? You can let me know through the chat if it froze, in which case uh, we will, uh, uh, if it's just one person, then I think this person has to reconnect. Oh, okay, so that is, it's telling me it's okay. Sorry about that, sorry about the interruption. So let's go back. So see, you can go inside, and the pretty cool thing here is that uh, you can debug completely your relay. And if, for example, you expect a tripping and there is no tripping, then you can, uh, you can investigate why. So let's go through there step by step. So the first thing, the signal acquisition. Okay, so you can see here you have the anti-aliasing filter. Then here you have the uh, discrete uh, function. You, you have the sampling here, and you also have the quantizer. Then you have some function considering the uh, the connection. So if you are Y connected or Delta connected. So basically on this side, you are with instantaneous value. Okay, sinusoidal with harmonics, etc. the real value. And here now you are in phaser. So what is it, a phaser? It's, if I unblock that, it's a, a breakout. So if I do a breakout, so it's a magnitude and, a, and an angle for the, the fundamental frequency. And also, you have here the RMS value calculated. Basically, the way, uh, the way the relay are built, you have some macro function like that. And according to, the, um, according to the, the selection you make in the mask, the macro function will be uh, modified. Okay, so that's the way it's, it's done. For example, if I go in, in this relay here, and I select the RMS. Okay, here, then I wait. Okay, so now I have the message, the relay is configured. Always wait to receive this message before doing anything. Okay, now you see that the RMS, it's the function have changed. Before it was written not used, now it's used. So why do we do that? We do that so that we uh, save some computational speed. Basically, anytime a function is useless, we change it with an empty function. And when it's useful, we, we put the actual function inside. Okay, so that's the way we do to, uh, uh, to make sure that this library is not very slow by, by, doing, by doing like dummy calculation. Okay, so then, um, so there is one, uh, one, it's a lot of advantage. One problem is if you do some modification here and then you change something in the mask, the full function will be changed and maybe your modification will be lost as well. So there is a way to avoid those modifications to be done. How do you do that? You right click on the device you want to modify, you go to attribute, and you go to the attribute device uh, version. Here the, the, the relay is in read only, so first you have to remove the read only to be, to be able to do that. Uh, to remove read only, you just try to move something, then you have this message. Okay, you click on unlock. So then let's go again. So you go to uh, attribute device version. And here, instead of adding the version, you have to write none. N-O-N-E. In that case, now, this function will not be updated. And you can modify whatever you want. You can put some scopes. Uh, you can uh, put your own algorithm. So as you see now, if I remove the RMS, Okay, the function here hasn't been modified. See, it's still used. So you can put scope and really do whatever you want. Don't forget to do that because it can, you can get very frustrated if, for example, you put a lot of scopes, then you f close the mask and everything is updated, you lose everything. So uh, remember this trick if you start uh, modifying the relay from inside. Okay, so then you have here the function that turned into PU. Uh, and you have finally all the function overcurrent instantaneous and uh, overcurrent time. 
Okay, so you can go, you have each level there if you go inside. Uh, I haven't talked about that uh, for, uh, soon, uh, yet, but you can also enable a restrained voltage in case you, put, you do the protection of uh, a machine. So you have the restrained value of the voltage that will change the pickup current, uh, the pickup current with uh, the value of the voltage. Okay, this option is here. Enable voltage restraint. Okay, and then if you go inside inside those elements, okay, you see the function that calculate the tripping time uh, or the reset time is the same. And then you have here the way uh, the way it works. Okay, the way uh, uh, we do that. So pretty interesting. Okay, then you have the tripping logic. So all the relay are kind of built this way. And so all the time you can go and investigate. Okay, so now I'm done with the overcurrent. And I can go through the next one, uh, the distance relay. I'm running out of time, so I have to accelerate. <laughs> so the, the example I'm going to show you is actually very interesting because we will study here some uh, uh, distance protection in different cases. In case where we have, let's call that traditional uh, 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 power generation, so uh, a gen synchronous generator, and uh, in case where instead of having those traditional generation, we have some wind parks. So basically, we study the, the different behavior between uh, a wind park and a traditional generation. Okay, so you have the distance relay, so exactly the same thing. You have the CTs, the CVTs. Here you notice that we disconnected the breaker from the relay because we don't want to open the line. Okay, we want to study, to investigate, and see uh, when the protection picks up. We don't want to open as soon as uh, we see the fault, else we don't have time really to see. Okay, so we have uh, two networks here and here, one line, uh, different protection, okay, that protects those lines. Um, a fault at a point, and in the middle, uh, you have a machine connected. The fault here is kind of far from the relay number one, and so when uh, there is a fault, it's not supposed to be in the zone one, in the zone one or in the zone two. Okay, maybe it could be in in the, uh, the the very large zone, so the three or four, but it's not supposed to be in the zone one or two, which are 80% and 120% in that case. Uh, you've noticed that I excluded those relays because they are useless in our case. So I exclude them, uh, again, to save computational speed. About that, uh, you have an option here in uh, which is named uh, exclude include relay that automatically include and exclude the relay in case you want just to run and uh, to run faster without simulating the relay. Okay, so finally, um, uh, so, okay, let's go inside the, sorry, I got the, uh, disrupted. Let's go inside the, um, the uh, distance relay. In that, in that case, the manufacturer choice is very important. Okay, I don't know if some of you are very familiar with uh, distance relay, but um, basically a distance relay is some zone like that that can be a metro, that can be quad length, and those zones are dynamic. Okay, which means that when you have a fault, uh, the zone will enlarge or uh, become smaller. And so all that depends on what is called the memory voltage or the polarized voltage. And each manufacturer has its own way of calculating the, um, uh, the polarized voltage. Okay, so here it's kind of, for the distance, really it's kind of important to uh, select the manufacturer. So the first tab is the same, as we said. Then the second tab, that's when you can choose the manufacturer. Uh, actually, in each tab, you can choose the manufacturer. It's a common input. Okay, so you select the manufacturer here. Uh, then you input uh, the line length, so in terms of, uh, in term of impedance. So you can input the, um, the impedance in the primary or the impedance at the secondary of the cities, up to you. And you select the type of memory uh, polariza the, uh, voltage polarization. So if you select a manufacturer, for example, Twitter, you will have the option to select the manufacturers. Okay, so I don't go in detail of what is cross-polarized, self-polarized. I will let the one of you that knows understand that. 
For the other, uh, basically, I recommend you if you do if you want a generic approach to use the cross polarized or the manufacturer, and always use the positive sequence. Okay, so then uh, you have the um, you have the uh, the face to ground uh, distance. So the same is the same here. It works the same way as the overcurrent. Each protection will give you some boolean. So in that case, it will be 21 underscore P or G A, <coughs> etc. So the same way as the overcurrent. And after you can build your tripping logic out of it. Okay, so let's see what you need for the uh, the ground descent. So it's if the protection is forward, reverse, or non-directional. If you want it initial or length, or if you want it quads, then the reach. So the reach can be in percent or in ohm at the secondary. The delay of tripping. So the zone one is instantaneous. Um, then again, for the one of you that are familiar with uh, uh, with distance, again, I don't have time here to explain the theory of distance, but you have the zero sequence compensation. You also have the mutual uh, zero sequence compensation in case you have parallel lines which are coupled. And finally, a supervisor of overcurrent. You can also enable different uh, reactance characteristics, neg negative sequence, directional, in case you know if you want to cut the uh, the zone like that. And so you can do that for each uh, for each zone. Of course, if you select quad, you will have to give more um, more data on the uh, left blinders, etc. So that's for the face to ground. Same thing for the face to phase. Okay, it's, it's a bit more simple for the face to phase because you don't talk about the negative sequence. Then you have the uh, uh, fault identification selection. So if you enable that, uh, it's some algorithm that are used by some manufacturers to decide beforehand uh, in what phase we could have a fault. And it's, I mean, it can be complex for some manufacturers, but basically. It looks at the uh, the angle of the zero sequence current and the angle of the negative sequence current, and uh, uh, according to the difference of angle between those two, uh, they will select which where the fault can be. I don't go in detail, but it's built already, so you can just select that. Uh, then you have the uh, load encroachment. So by the way, these produce as well um, these produce as well a boolean, which is an SIGS. And we can use that uh, in our flipping logic. So same thing for the load encroachment. Uh, where is that is to define a load zone. Uh, most of the time is used to prevent the tripping. If you are in this zone, you don't want to trip. Okay, so you can define this zone and use Z in or Z out for the tripping logic. We have the power swing. I will talk about that in an example after. And the tripping logic, which is built the same way. And so you see you have Z in, Z out. So for example, if I don't want to uh, trip when uh, we are in the zone, zone, in the load zone, I can put here and not Z out. Okay, so you can do something like that. It works. So by, by the way, if you do a mistake here and you don't write the <coughs> good syntax, for example, I don't put co uh, capital letter, you will have a message here saying that you have a syntax error. Okay, and then you can correct it. It tells you that out is not recognized. So it's pretty well done. Okay, and so again, uh, you have the help. Okay, it doesn't want to let me go out now. Let's correct that. Okay, so then you have the help that explains how we calculate the memory voltage, uh, how all these functions work, basically. Okay, so I don't modify this one. Um, let me drag and drop another one to show you uh, what's happened inside when you modify it. So let's select a manufacturer like Schweitzer, for example, use uh, all its uh, functions. Okay, so now I say, okay, inside the relay, all the functions are uh, being changed. So that's why you see it's written configuring. Uh, it can take some time, so again, before you receive this small message, don't do anything. So then you go inside, 
okay, and uh, you can see that some function have been changed. Okay, for example, here is the relay uh, uh, SEL321. So you can see the memory voltage use a filter, okay, which is based on, uh, we do some sampling and it's based on the last 60 sample. Uh, same thing then if you look at the load and the uh, fault identification, it's up there. Okay, you can see all the logic of uh, a Schweitzer for this particular uh, function. So it's, it's kind of very detailed. Okay, I will not say that it's uh, as detailed as hardware in the loop, but it's a very good in between, between uh, in between, between in the end, uh, uh, the class, the traditional protection software and hardware in the loop. So it's very convenient for in investigation. Okay, so I have to accelerate. So see here I have this uh, synchronous machine um, and some wind park. So they all produce the same. So right now I include the synchronous machine. Okay, I do the uh, I do the load flow, and then I will do the time domain. And it will be interesting to look at the travel of the locus uh, in the Rx graph. Okay, and to compare that. Okay, so let's do it. So I, I start the simulation. And then I, I show you how to do that. So basically, in this protection library, you have something named um, distance locus and zones drawing. So it's this guy. So then you double click, and it works kind of the same way as the protection coordination. You select the relay. So let's do it for this relay, the relay one. And you click on create copy template. Then you click on OK. You wait copy opens, and you click on OK. And so then, here you will have you will have all the zones drawing. When you click on on play, you will receive this message. Basically, it's to, it's to remove the graph of all the functions that are not enabled. For example, here the power swing is not enabled, so you see that it removes all the graph of the power swing. So you say yes. Okay, and we can see here. So that's a pretty uh, a pretty interesting part I find. Uh, so we can see. Here, that's the point where we are in steady state. And uh, when you have the fault, okay, we travel there and uh, we see that we stay outside of the zone. So few features, uh, because here it's a, you know, a two-dimension graph, it's hard to have an idea what's the time here. Okay, so we implemented some, uh, some, I mean, some tricks to, make, to give you an idea where, uh, how long it takes, for example, to go from this point to this one. And how long do, do we stay, uh, did, did we stay here? So for example, if I zoom here, you can see that you have a big dot. Okay, so these dots uh, uh, get larger and larger the longer you stay. So in, it, in the end, it's not a super precise way, but you know that when you have a dot like that, it means you stayed a lot of time here. Okay, also if I zoom a little bit there, you will see that we have those, you know, those small like uh, discontinuity. This continuity, this, those discontinuities, sorry, occur every cycle. So basically, you know that between here and here, there have been one cycle, and you can know like that how fast it travels. So it just gives you indication. It's not perfect, but it's not bad. It's like, it's like kind of, uh, it's like precise, I find. So where do you set up all that? Uh, so if you go in the mask of the uh, relay, you go in scope, you, that's, uh, you have here the option to, uh, to display all those locus. So here they are all enabled. And then you have the extension time. Okay, I will explain after what's the refresh period. So let's compare now the behavior. So if I save those uh, results here, so I select them and I uh, do the, a snapshot. And uh, let's change, so let's uh, exclude the uh, synchronous generator and include a wind park of type four, for example, full converter, and do the same simulation. Okay, so we'll see the difference. Actually, I can draw those while the simulation is running. Okay, so how do you do that? You click on this, you put the number of acquisition, and you can redraw in the same time. Oh, did I just run the same thing? Uh, no, I just forgot to run it. <laughs> Sorry. Oh, I think it's running now. Never mind. 
Yes, it is. So see, that's now uh, the locus with the wind park. So it's a little bit different, but not that much. Okay, and so we are waiting for the fault. So now you see that the small dots get larger and larger because we are in a steady state point. It's a bit slow here because you know the wind park is uh, it's, it's more it's more long to simulate a wind park, uh, but it's still pretty fast. Seventeen percent. We have to wait. The fact that I use. Uh, the fact that I use the WebEx slow down my computer a little bit as well. We have to be patient. Okay, so by the way, here that's uh, the locus for the ground distance, and here that's the locus for the phase distance. Okay, so the phase, uh, the fault we have here is on phase AB, well, between A and B. Okay, so let's look at those. Okay, so the fault hasn't occurred yet. It's very slow. It was faster when I ran it this morning. It's okay. Oh, here we go. So now we have the fault. So you see that we jump. So see the interesting thing here is that because of the wind park and the inverter of the wind park, the, now the release is something completely different because the, the inverter tries to balance the fault, so inject a lot of positive and negative sequence. And the trouble we have here is that in one case, we were outside of the zones, but with the wind park, which produces the same amount of power, we now get inside the zone too. And so that's a concern because now we can trip a relay that is not supposed to trip. So it's, um, it's a pretty big concern. So, I mean, this, uh, this simulation is very interesting because we can see clearly the different signature of uh, the, the synchronous generator and uh, the wind park. Okay, so usually I should finish the webinar now. It's one hour. However, I'm not done. I really apologize. I was too slow. If you have to go, uh, don't worry. This webinar will be available on YouTube after that. Uh, I will try to finish. I need five to ten more minutes. So I will, uh, I will accelerate for the other case. So, but then it will be on YouTube. If you have to go, you can uh, look at the end of the webinar later. Okay, so I just have to finish with the differential and the power swing. Then I think we will, it will be good for today. Okay, so uh, okay, let's do it quickly. So look, now we are in distance. I do the power swing uh, because it's kind of the same thing, power swing. Um, you can, by the way, display the locus of the power swing in the same time and out of step in the same time as the distance. And so you can be sure that the power swing will pick up before the distance and avoid uh, a tripping during power swing. Okay, so the next example, um, it's about this, um, uh, this uh, network. So some synchronous machine with some lines uh, with a series compensation. We have a fault at the point and disconnect the network. So we have a power swing. Okay, and uh, so I don't get too much in detail because of the time. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, but so basically the power swing, um, you can select the shape. So you can take a three-step three step power swing. In that case, you will have three zones or a two-step, in which case only the outer and inner zone are considered. Uh, you can select the shape. So if you want quad, MHO, or MHO with blinders. Uh, you can also select if, for example, if you take MHO, uh, if you want all of them to have the same reaching impedance, in that case, you can um, so in that case, they all have the same reach impedance, and you will play with uh, with the comparator angle to give different shape. Okay, all that is explained in the help. I have to go fast, but again, you can spend more time understanding all that. And I mean, it's pretty typical as well. Okay, so you enter the characteristic of each zone, so the reach impedance. Um, so let's go to the quad, for example. So the reach impedance outer, inner, etc., and the delay between each zone. So delay, delay one, where you enter in the outer, then delay two, when you enter in, um, in the uh, middle, and delay three, when you enter in the inner zone. And then you can put a tripping delay for the out of step as well. So that's the, the traditional way of finding a power swing. We also have uh, built the uh, continuous impedance calculation. It's something that a relay like a, uh, Schneider uh, use. 
So it's based on the variation of the inductance and resistance. So it's, uh, it's something like that. So you can select uh, the, the steps here between two measurements. And then you have some uh, criteria. Again, I speak here for the people that, um, that know those kind of technology. Uh, so you can decide um, uh, you know, the minimum variation of resistance and, in the, in the, and uh, uh, inductance to state a power swing and a maximum value to make the difference between the power swing and the fault. Okay, so all those settings are here. Okay, so same thing as distance, you can, uh, let me close some of the scope views. Same thing as distance, you can then draw the zones. Okay, so you select the relay, you click on uh, create the scope template, you wait. Okay, scope view will open. Then you click on OK as soon as you see it open here. Okay, and so now you can see the three zones that are drawn. I, I run this uh, simulation before because uh, I kind of knew we would miss time. Okay, and here, same thing, you can see how it travels through the uh, zone. So it's pretty convenient here because you can design the delay like that. Okay, for example, if I zoom more, I don't, I mean, it's not too bad, okay? It's not, the, it's not perfect, but it's not too bad. For example, here, I can see using those discontinuity that to go from the uh, middle zone to the inner zone, it took like, okay, one, two, three, four, five, six cycles. So I have a very good idea of the delay between those zones. And if those zones are too close to each other, I can modify them like that to, uh, to, this, to find out a good delay. So it's, I find it pretty good that way as well. Um, I mean, yeah, it's your, it's your to judge. Okay, so that's pretty much it for, uh, for the power swing. Again, okay, the function is inside, so you can go in the out of step and you can decide, okay, you can go inside and, uh, and see uh, how, it, how it builds. Okay, so you have here the output of each, uh, each zone. You have here the continuous impedance calculation for each phase. Okay, so it's, uh, it's pretty cool. You can go inside, modify, do whatever you want. Okay, next one. And uh, let's, okay, it will be the, I have the lost of field as well, which is pretty interesting, but we don't have time. Uh, so let's go to the uh, different shore. Well, basically the lost of field, um, I won't run any simulation, but it's the exact same thing. Okay, I, I talk about it in 30 seconds. The last of it, it's exactly the same thing. You have a synchronous generator, a fault, or a, let's say open, you open the field, so you lost it. Um, the, the relay, so the function is the number 40. So for the last of field, you, uh, you set all these functions. You can use typical settings that are based on the characteristic of your machine. Okay, and if I look at the zone, I go super fast. I really apologize for that, but I have only one hour. We need one week to talk about all that. Okay, so that's here the power swing, and uh, here you can see the zone, and you go into the uh, into the uh, loss of field. So you can coordinate the power swing, the distance, and the loss of field to the loss of field together. So that's something pretty cool. Okay, now if I go to the different show. So don't worry, if you find it's too fast, over the year we'll probably do some more webinar on each specific type of function. Okay, here we are just describing the overall library. Um, so this library will be available, uh, you know, probably next month. So here we are presenting it. Probably next month, uh, this library will be available. Actually, at the end of the webinar, uh, you will receive a small survey. And one of the questions is if you'd like to test this uh, library. So if you answer yes to this question, uh, we will remember your name. And as soon as the, um, the library will be out, uh, will be released, we will contact you uh, for that. And you will actually have, uh, considering the zone you are, 10 to 15% off on the price of uh, the uh, library. So uh, I really recommend you, if you're interested, to check yes to be contacted. 
Okay, so uh, this example, um, it's actually an example where you have a lot of protection together. One of them here is a differential protection. Okay, so what happened? We have the fall, which is outside of the zone. But because of the saturation of the CT, we actually see, oops, sorry, we actually see a differential current. Okay, so in the relay itself, we selected a Schweitzer relay. And in this Schweitzer relay, we have some external fault detection, okay, with the settings from Schweitzer. We also have enabled the restraint, the harmonic restraint, everything from uh, Schweitzer. Okay, so if you go inside the relay, you can actually see all that. So, I mean, I know the relay by heart, so I know where to go, but it's not that difficult to understand. You have some drawing all the time to make you understand. Okay, so you have here how we calculate the restraint current, the restraint uh, for the instantaneous value, the filtered, and here you have the internal external fault detection logic. Okay, so everything is explained here. That's the way it's done in Schweitzer relay. Okay, and I put some scope manually here in uh, to, to find, to, to scope when this logic is uh, detected or not, when the logic has detected something or not. Okay, so I run this uh, simulation previously. Uh, actually, I, I also say a template in scope view. So let's just load this template because I have a few stuff to show you here. Let me close all that. So with scope view, when you know when you do all the time the same uh, study, you can save a template, and then later when you go back to your study, you open the template. So here the template, ah, oh, that's external fault. Yeah, it's a good one. So the template is in XML like that. Okay, so it's interesting. What we see here is we have the fault. So I show different stuff. Those first graphs here are the uh, the negative sequence, uh, no, the, the, sorry, the second harmonic current present in the differential current. And here's the same thing with the fourth harmonic. So we can see the, sec the, the second harmonic level. Uh, in that case, it's okay, it's not that high. And here we can see the restraint and the differential current. So in blue is the differential current, and in green is the restraint current. And we can see that the differential current is above. Okay, and so there uh, we can see that we have an external fault detection. Okay, so that's, uh, I mean, that's, uh, that's pretty like, uh, that's pretty cool to be able to study that and you need time domain software for that. Another application, and I will, uh, I will conclude on this one, is for uh, transformer energization. Here again is the same concept. Uh, I have to run this simulation. I energize the transformer. Uh, when I energize the transformer, I will have an inrush current. The inrush current will create um, some differential current, and uh, I can monitor that. And because of the harmonic restraint and the harmonic inhibit, uh, all that will be blocked. Okay, so again, I apologize. I go very fast on all that, but we will do webinar especially for that. It's also a lot of information. So I can scope here the differential current on phase A. Let's work only for the phase A. Okay, and see the inhibit here. Okay, so you can see we have 0.2 PU of negative, of zero sequence, of second harmonic, sorry, I'm tired, second harmonic current. Here we have about 0.4% of fourth harmonic, and we can see the, the inhibits that are on to uh, make sure we don't trip in that case. Okay, I have to stop now. The webinar is too long. <laughs> I really apologize for the length, uh, but I hope you enjoy. Uh, please uh, give us some feedback on, um, give us some feedback after on the survey. Um, okay, you have to consider that it's a, it's a new field for us in the MTP. We know that EMTP is a very good environment to study protection, but we are really learning. So we are, um, we are li very like listening to the comments of our user. So from what you see here, don't hesitate to send us some comments. We will really consider them for future development. Um, now the, the library will be out uh, soon, probably in the, coming, uh, in the coming 30 days. So um, then you will be able to try it and again, uh, you can be, you will be able to send us the um, 
to send us the uh, the feedback. Uh, quickly before I finish the webinar, uh, some uh, uh, the future webinars and conference. At any time, you can go on uh, emtp-software.com. You have a, a, a tab and event, and you can see all of them. For the US, we have our uh, user conference in Boston. So it's the same week as the IEEE uh, general meeting in Boston. So if you attend this meeting, really you can consider coming to our user conference. It's right after. Uh, you can register uh, on, the, uh, on our website. And then we have our uh, user group as well in Europe. Um, the specificity of the user group is that we'll, we will uh, put together all the software we commercialize with PowerSys. So EMTP, uh, GMAC, PSIM. Uh, smart control, etc. So if you want to register to this conference, you have the link here as well. Uh, so finally, uh, if you would like to try MTP or if you want more information about uh, this library, please contact us uh, at cell at emtp-software.com. Uh, if you are from a university, uh, we usually provide a lot of license for very good rate or I know us in the US, we do it for free. So please contact us if you're interested of getting some license for your research or for uh, teaching. Uh, finally, we also provide engineering services. Uh, if you're interested by that, you can also contact us. Uh, we'll be happy to help you. So please, please take some time to answer the survey. Uh, let us know how we did and if you have any ideas on uh, future development for this uh, library. Uh, we are really likely, uh, really like uh, interested to to hear by your comments, and let us know if you would like to try um, to try this uh, this library um, and uh, take benefits of the 10 to 15 percent off uh, the, the this library. So thank you very much. I really hope you enjoyed the webinar, uh, and I wish you a very good day to all of you. Bye bye.